Hello, I'm Percy Lays, and thanks for tuning in to episode five of Love at First Scent, the Facebook Live event where I try to give you my first impressions of perfumes which ideally I have not tried before. If you've watched previous, uh, the four previous episodes, you'll know that the, that the whole point behind this exercise is, is to, to sort of provide a, a contrast with the writing on my blog and with the 60 second scent reviews on YouTube because they are ones over which I've taken a lot more time. I, I, I've thought about what I think of the scents, I've considered and reconsidered. This is supposed to be um, about first impressions and instant impressions. Um, with sometimes interesting results. Now, I hope you've all been well, regular viewers. I haven't done this for a little while. That's because I've been on my summer travels, but uh, the same rules apply. Uh, this really is live and unscripted. So if anything should happen, like if there's a sudden noise off outside the window to my left, please forgive me. Yesterday, I was talking to somebody and I said that I always worry about whether the Wi-Fi is going to conk out and they misheard me and they said that I always worry about whether the wife is going to conk out. Um, to which my response was, I don't care if the wife conks out, the show has to go on. But anyway, uh, if, you, uh, enjoy, or if you're enjoying what you're watching, please give me as many thumbs up and hearts, etc, etc, as you feel inclined to do. And please do engage as much as you can. I will try to answer any questions that come up if you have any comments, if you would particularly like me to focus on any of the perfumes that are here, just say so. Uh, this video, after it's been uh, broadcast, will be permanently put up on the Persolace Perfumes page on Facebook, so you can watch it at your leisure. And then also within the next few days, I'll put it up on YouTube. Um, and so if you are watching on YouTube or after the live broadcast on Facebook, thanks very much. If you would like to leave a question now, please do so and I will do my best to answer it. So I think at that this point, enough rabbiting from me, we should get on with the first perfume. And until a few hours ago, I had no idea that I was going to start with this one, but it was delivered, uh, I think, about three, three and a half hours ago, UK time, possibly four hours ago, and I immediately thought to myself, right, this is it, this has got to be the one that we start with today, because it is this one, the latest from Garla. It's called Louis, pardon my French pronunciation, and some of you, many of you, will immediately notice that it is in a bottle that is very similar to a very old perfume from the house, which was called Liu. Uh, and unless I'm mistaken, that one was made by Jacques Garlin, but I would need to look that up. I think it's a 1920 scent, but don't hold me to that. If that's wrong, um, I will check it out after the broadcast and I will put the correct information down at, at, at the bottom of the video on Facebook. But anyway, that's almost besides the point. Um, what I do know about this one is that it was made by uh, Delphine Jelk, who I think has now officially been given the position of an in-house perfumer um, at Garlin under the supervision or management of Thierry Vasseur, the, the, the person who many of us know of as the in-house perfumer. And apart from that, I know next to nothing about it because part of the deal with Love at First Scent as well is that I try not to read the press releases and the public information until after I've smelt the perfume with you. Uh, hi Karina, thanks very much for watching. Um, by the way, if I, if I sort of look slightly bemused and look off camera, that's because I'm reading your comments as they're flashing up, so bear with me. Anyway, I think we should smell Louis. So, if I go to label a blotter. I have these minor fears that one day when I'm doing one of these videos with these bottles that I've genuinely never um, sprayed before, that the spray mechanism isn't going to work or something. But anyway, let us have a look. This is really nerve-wracking because I so want to like this. I, I still have a lot of affection for the House of Garlin and I may not like every single thing they do, but I really, really want to like every single thing they do. And so please let this be good. <laughs> um, here we go. Okay, the spray mechanism is working. I can vouch for that. Right. I'll be ready. Is this going to be love at first scent? Oh, that's a good noise, by the way. Hi, Maria. Thanks very much for joining and watching. Feel free to ask any questions. 
Mm, I think it might be fond affection at first scent, at the very least. What I'm getting is a powdery retro floral vibe and heading towards carnation, I would say. Karina, it, it might be a goodie actually, this one. It's, it certainly makes a very, very positive first impression. So, what am I thinking or feeling? Um, like I said, definitely a kind of retro feel, but in a positive way. You, you, it, it doesn't feel like you've raided somebody's stash of vintage scents. Not that that would necessarily be a bad thing. There's a powderiness, a creaminess, Beautiful texture actually so far on the blot, a real, real seamless smoothness, a gorgeous uh, scent scape. Karina's asking, if you can't see the comment, whether it's overly clovey. Good question, because of course uh, carnation and clove share a lot of facets. Um, uh, somebody who knows more about the chemistry of this can correct me, but it's eugenol, I think, that is the, one of the main chemicals that they, molecules that they have in, in common, which gives cloves their distinctive clovey scent. Um, the answer to your question is no, actually, no, it, it, it isn't overly clovey at all. Overly clovey, try saying that quickly. Maybe that is actually what is preventing it from coming across as overly old-fashioned. Maybe that's what's bringing it into the 21st century. Uh, the usage of eugenol is very severely restricted and controlled, so I guess maybe it wouldn't have been possible uh, for this to have become overly clovey. But thanks for asking me that, because actually that's what it isn't. And so I'm thinking to myself, right, so it, if it isn't overly clovey, what is it that's making me think that it's like carnation? And there's a sort of... These are all supposed to be positive attributes, okay, but there's a kind of dustiness or maybe a parchment-like, paper-like quality, that feeling of walking into a room that maybe has just not been aired for too long, but, but at the point when that sensation is comforting rather than off-putting. Um, and, and then I guess there is a kind of creaminess that maybe you would associate with carnation, a pepperiness. But this is, this is all done very elegantly so far, because at the base of it all there is, there is a very strongly oriental feel, maybe vanilla or benzoin, which just makes the whole thing really, really rich and creamy. It's like, it's like carnation petals whipped up in whipped cream. Karina's asking whether it's like a lady's knicker drawer. No. <laughs> Why? What, how would that smell for you? I'm curious now. So I am so relieved to be able to say that, you know what, this actually might be love at first scent. I need to take this for a further test drive and get Madame Persolais to, to wear it. Thank goodness for that. What a relief. Um, it's quiet. It's muted. Uh, restrained. but really quite gorgeous so far on the blotto. Right, okay, let us see what the official line is. This is where we get to have a bit of a chuckle because there is no purple prose as purple as perfume press releases. Okay, the first word here is gender. Gender is not something that is determined, but a game in which everyone can reinvent the rules, put a twist on tradition and blend the lines between femininity and masculinity. Okay, so Garlin jumping on the gender fluidity bandwagon with this scent. Right, let's see where this goes. Gender fluidity is an attitude that comes to us straight from the roaring 20s when women wore trousers for the first time, adopted a cropped haircut or sported a cigarette between their lips. I'm so glad that they specify that it was between their lips. Today, the same desire for freedom is inspiring a whole generation that is breaking free from traditional divides and shaking up stereotypes to affirm every facet of their identity this breath of creative daring has given Garland the idea for an unmistakably universal scent. Okay, do you know what? I'm being a bit facetious, but yeah, I'll go with that. This, this, 
maybe that balance that I was talking about, maybe that feeling of restraint is actually what is giving this a kind of gender neutrality or a gender fluidity, which is also maybe, by extension, what is giving it its sense of modernity, its sense of a fragrance that is very much something that has been created now rather than in the 20s. Louis is a fragrance that likes to blur the boundaries, not entirely feminine, not truly masculine. It is both at once. Its ambiguous fragrance trail is based on benzoin, an ingredient that also has numerous facets, floral, spicy and woody in turn. Yeah, certainly those, those attributes come to the fore here. This resin is revealed in all of its complexity as the composition created by Delphine Jelk under the creative direction of Thierry Vassa unfolds. So there you go, official confirmation that uh, Delphine Jelk created this um, under the sort of line management of Mr. Vassa. After an opening burst blending a soft pear note, possibly maybe kind of gin, general orchard fruitiness, with a lively clove note, yeah, don't worry, it wasn't too lively, benzoin merges with the powdery and spidey, sp spidery, spicy accents of the carnation accord. An equally unexpected and harmonious union with this androgynous flower, which is sometimes displayed in men's buttonholes. Then benzoin takes on a darker, more intense dimension, pulsating over a leathery base with smoky and woody accents. Yes, but all still in that very, very sort of restrained, quiet, elegant, decorous way. This isn't, this isn't like a sudden trip to a tannery in Morocco. Vanilla and white musk transport it to a comfortable and supple sensuality. Supple is a good word for this so far. Bearing in mind, I only sprayed it about, what, five minutes ago. Uh, again, those of you who um, w have watched these videos regularly, you will know that about an hour, two hours or so after the end of the broadcast, I post a little update on Facebook in the comments below the video to actually say how the blotters have progressed. Because as you will all know, so often a perfume that shows a great deal of promise at the start turns out to be quite disappointing. And then a lot of perfumes that actually maybe start off being quite pedestrian develop really, really gorgeous dry downs. So the, the, I cannot, cannot stress enough that these are first impressions. Um, and I certainly don't make my final judgment about the perfumes based on an initial sniff. I never do that for the perfumes that I review on, on the blog or I write about elsewhere. So do check back later to see how the blotters have done. Uh, somebody's asked me a question. I missed the name of the start. Could you mention it again, please? I'm intrigued and fancy a sniff myself. Right, the name, Karina, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, is Louis. Okay. You've got it there. Hopefully you should be able to. The names of all of the perfumes also will be written out in a comment at the bottom of the video. And Joe's asking a question, but Joe, your question seems to have had a few words. Oh, here we go. The question's come up now. Is that a Burberry scent from the high end line? Ooh, eagle-eyed Joe. Uh, this is a little Burberry box here. Can you see me pointing at that or is that off camera? I'll see if we get round to those. Uh, but since you've asked Joe, Karina tells me I am pronouncing her name correctly. Thank you very much. Joe, since you asked, um, I'm, I, I don't know whether we'll get time to do these because there is one that I would really, really, really love to do right now. Um, okay, where to start with this? Those of you who live in the UK, and particularly those of you who live in London, will be aware that at the very top of Harrods, literally on the roof of Harrods, there is a, a high-end perfumery called the Salon de Parfum, and they recently extended, uh, so they've got a few more units at the at one end of the corridor. And Burberry is now one of the brands that you can find at the Salon, um, and they have got a range of scents. I'm trying to tip these over gently, because if I'm not gentle, they will all come falling out, and then we'll have a fun live TV moment. Um, so how many are here? Seven? Um, and I think, unless I'm mistaken, they're all meant to be based on an English garden. So, Joe, if we don't get round to smelling these today, um, then I will do my best to write about them or tweet about them. If there is one in particular that you have heard of that you would like me to maybe have a quick sniff of now, let me know in a comment um, and I'll see what I can do. Karina says the box looks pretty. Yes, it does actually. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful way of presenting samples and very, very helpful to the likes of me because it means that 
you get everything in a in a in a manageable size, and you can you can go through the entire range. So. Uh, please keep the thumbs up and the hearts, if you so wish, coming. And if you're watching this on YouTube after the live broadcast, please consider giving me a thumbs up because all of that kind of thing is very much appreciated. If you have any questions, keep them coming. But, 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 I would like to cheat now a little bit and um, spray something which I did have a smell of about four, four and a half weeks ago, literally a day or two before I was going away on my travels. And I must admit, at the time, I was very taken with it, but I have not smelt it at all yet since then, and so I thought we could do it today on Love at First Scent. Uh, this is from a perfumer and a perfume house whose work always, always excites me. I'm sure a lot of you will have heard of her. She's a Zurich-based perfumer called Vero Kern, and her perfumery is called Vero Profumo. By the way, I'd, I'd be very interested to know, actually, how many of you have heard of her, so... If you're aware of Vero, please say so. She doesn't release um, perfumes at the rate of, you know, two, one every month or one every other month. In fact, she makes us wait for a very, very long time for her releases. And that is because I think she genuinely spends ages composing them, looking for the right raw materials, tweaking them, balancing them. And she has yet to make a dud. She has yet to make anything that is less than very, very good indeed. Um, I think I just managed to catch a comment from B saying that B is aware of Vero, and I'm sure you love her work. Joe's just written, here's an interruption. I actually visited the Salon Tabachva at Harrods last month during my trip to London. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on this line that is created by Francis Kochan. Uh, we will do our best. Like I said, if we don't manage to get round to them today, um, we, we, I will definitely write about them. But if there is one in particular that you'd like me to have a smell of, see if you can sort of dig out the names of what they are and see whether one of them strikes your fancy. Anyway, to go back to Vero. Yeah, I love her too, Beth. Uh, like I said, yet to make a dud. Uh, I do love some of hers more than others, but I kind of pretty much love them all, um, except maybe for the last one, which I think was called Rosy or Rosie. Um, it was it was very good, but maybe not not complete love for me. I'm going on and on a bit, aren't I? The the slight problem with this one is that I'm not sure how we pronounce its name. Now the name is spelled N A J A, um, and so I wondered if the J is meant to be like a kind of Spanish South American J and whether it's meant to be Naja. Um, but then I I looked up the etymology and it, it, it's named after um, a particular type of cobra. Uh, and apparently the this word, N-A-J-A, -A, comes from an old word from India, I think it may have been an old Sanskrit word, which was pronounced Naga, with a hard G sound. So then that made me think that maybe this is supposed to be Naja. Um, so Vero, if at some point you get to watch this and I'm mispronouncing the name of your perfume, I'm going to go with Naja for the moment. Um, please let me know if it turns out that it's wrong. Um, Everyone forgive me. And actually, if any of you are watching and you know for a fact that it's supposed to be Naja, then just correct me now. But we'll go with Nadja, if that's okay. And we'll try not to make it sound like Nadia. Okay. All of Vero's perfumes so far, their names are uh, four-letter words. It's obviously just a, a thing that she's done. Any new release by her is always an exciting prospect. Uh, thank you very much to Bloom Perfumery in Covent Garden for this sample. Um, all right, here we go. Oh, it's, it's so weird smelling something again when you only had an initial sniff four and a half weeks ago and you haven't smelt it since um, because I'm immediately taken back to that. I'm taken back to my initial impression and my sort of 0 0.1 microsecond first impression was not entirely positive because I thought, what's Vero done here? But then that goes away almost insti instantly. The, the, the thing that does make me cringe slightly is that it opens with, shock horror, a melony aquatic note. It is completely unexpected um, because it comes across as, uh, as a bit chemical and strident and odd. Um, but A, maybe 
whatever material, whatever synthetic material she's used there, maybe after its initial burst, it is doing something in the rest of the structure that she requires it to do to support the other materials or bring out other facets or whatever. In other words, maybe the, 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 the initial chemical burst is the price we pay for whatever that material is doing later on that's wonderful. And B, maybe she actually wants to startle us. Um, Vera was a very, very, very clever lady. Uh, she is a trained aromatherapist and she was actually uh, a professional aromatherapist before she went into perfume creation. And she is acutely aware of the effect that various smells have on people. And like a, like a director at the top of their game or an author at the top of their game, some bit, an artist who knows exactly what effects they are creating with, with certain decisions that they make, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Vera wants the initial response to this perfume to be, what the hell is this? Um, to just make you stop and pay attention, um, to, to, to stop you in your olfactory tracks. And, and, and it did again just now. Really, really weird melon construction. But then what happens is you get, it starts turning yellowy brown and it starts, it starts darkening the, the mood all around you, quietening everything down. Um, kind of bringing the focus of your world a little bit. It's, it's a very, very internal feeling sort of perfume, which again, I think is no coincidence. As I think it was inspired by um, South American shamans and um, South American spiritualism. What was that film that came out? Was it last year? Was it Embrace of the Serpent? Really, really excellent film, uh, but, which I won't get into now, but it was about a sort of journey along, I suppose must have been the Amazon, and it all becomes quite trippy at the end, which maybe wasn't quite such a good idea. But I'm reminded of this film because of the reference to the serpent, because I know, having read things before, that it's meant to be based on uh, South American spiritualism or spirituality. And just to make things a little bit more concrete and specific, what we're getting now after that fruity burst is smoky honey notes smoke inflected floral notes and the, the the star attraction tobacco a really really I almost said earthy it's not quite earthy what is it it's kind of expensive smelling tobacco tobacco I, I've never smoked uh, in my life but sometimes on the rare occasion that you come across somebody smoking a pipe, you just kind of think, oh, well, maybe shaving a few years off your life might not be such a bad idea for the sake of being, you know, having that smell around you all the time. It's the, it's the kind of tobacco smell that actually makes you consider taking up smoking, if such a thing were possible. Not that I would ever do that, because I'd much rather just smell of this stuff. I jinxed it, didn't I? I shouldn't have said anything about the Wi-Fi conking out. And of course, the Wi-Fi conked out. Right, I have no idea at what point I lost you, but if you are back, please could you say that you're back? Um, I was going to actually, while I'm by this cover, because I had to go and adjust the router. <sighs> Technology. I see a few of you have started coming back already. Um, sorry about that. I hope it doesn't happen again. If it does, and we still have enough time left to talk about some more perfumes. <laughs> yeah, oops, exactly right. Hello everyone, thank you very much for bearing with me and my poor router. I need to get a, a better one, I think. Um, it would have been more convenient if the wife had conked out instead of the Wi-Fi conking out. But, it actually made me realize where we are with the time. What I will do is uh, at the end of the, the, the previous video, because I guess now this is going to be a video in two parts, um, I will have to leave a comment to say please look for part two. Um, but the, the joys of live broadcasting, people. Anyway, where are we with Vero's perfume? So yes, it is this really, really interesting tobacco, which I have lost my train of thought completely, but let's just try and focus in on what this perfume is actually doing. 
Yeah, it, it sort of seems to speak from this little internal hub of calm. If any of you have tried Vero's uh, perfume Onda, and if you haven't, you really, really need to. It, it, it is a masterpiece, I think. I don't use that word lightly, but Onda is a masterpiece, O-N-D-A. That's a perfume where the star material is basically vetiver. I can never, whenever I write about that perfume, I never be able to stop myself from describing it as a black hole. It feels like this massive entity, this really gigantic entity, you know, about the size of 12 of our suns, that just sucks in everything around it relentlessly. A, a, a real take no prisoners perfume, but also the kind of perfume that you're quite happy to be taken by. Naja, if we're still going with that pronunciation, also has that compelling quality, but it achieves that effect in a completely different way. It's almost like it's this little light burning in the middle of a darkened room, and it knows it doesn't need to attract very much attention to itself, but because it knows that all of the attention will somehow be focused on its power. So I guess it's magnetic. There is something about this tobacco here that that Vero has managed to make magnetic and alluring and compelling. Uh, and honey, honey has that sort of effect anyway. There is something compelling. D d d honey draws you in. You know, I don't want to say sticky because you know, that's a bit of an obvious term to use, but it does draw you in and you do feel like you're being drawn in like a drone to this queen bee in the center of this tobacco force field. And that melon note just hovers there just to keep making you think that there is something weird going on. So it, it, stops, this, it stops this from feeling too safe. And I think Vera was really quite brave to put that melon note in there because every now, it, it adds a contrast, of course, so that is one thing that it's doing. But every now and then it also makes you think, why the hell is this here? And of course that just draws you into the perfume even further because you, you keep trying to work it out. It's, I think I'm going to be very taken with this. Now that I've come back from my travels, I didn't take this sample with me. I'm sure I'm going to be wearing it lots. I may even be uh, moved to, to, to write about it on my blog, but I, I think she's done it again with this one. I, I think it's, it's going to be right up there with, with her best in the final reckoning. So that's Naja from Vero Profumo. Now, to take a slight pause from that, if you're tuning in again, thank you very much. A few minutes ago, I had some kind of a Wi-Fi internet issue, and so I stopped the first uh, broadcast, the first video, and started another one. If you've come over from the first one, thank you very much for your patience. Apologies for any inconvenience. I do appreciate you doing so. Um, I'm just going to tap my screen because some annoying message has come up. I'm going to panic now every single thing, time something comes up on the screen. But what you are watching is episode 5, part 2, of Love at First Scent on Facebook Live, my Facebook Live event where I smell perfumes for the first time in front of you and give you my initial impressions. Please keep questions and comments coming um, and feel free to give me thumbs up or thumbs down when the technology lets us down. Uh, if you are watching this after the initial broadcast on Facebook, thank you very much for doing so. Do feel free to leave questions because I will try to answer those as well. And if you're watching this on YouTube because I will attempt to YouTube upload uh, within the next few days, then leave questions on YouTube as well. Uh, Karina says that Bloomstock's Vero Perfume... Yes, they do. Uh, in fact, I'm not sure where else in the UK does. Are you UK based then, Karina? Um, Bloom Perfumery in Covent Garden, last time I checked, they had the entire range. You really, really should get samples. My favourite from Vero is Onda, but you also need to check out Ruby. I think we pronounce it Ruby, even though the name is R-U-B-J. Uh, then she has a glorious, glorious, fabulous uh, lavender called Kiki, uh, one, of, one of the best lavenders ever made. You're based in Bristol. Okay, so you're in a very, very uh, beautiful city. And uh, Bloom, I think, have a pretty good sample service, but I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, another comment. Hi, Perseleys. I have Naja and Ruby from Verica. Naja is gorgeous. Honey linden smell. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That linden blossom feel. Naja is long-lasting and a bit shocking. 
Yes, I would go with shocking. I would go with shocking. Oh, and Karina's just written that. So you know Ruby or Ruby? I think it's Ruby. Um, so you, you already know some of her work. We need to move on. Um, now for another genuine one that I haven't smelled before. Can you just about make out? I've got these guys here. Five bottles. Perhaps you can't see the fifth one because it's just off stage. So I'll bring it in. These are new uh, masculine scents from Xenia. And they were actually launched last night in London. So again, uh, seeing as they're brand new, I thought it might make sense to smell them here. They're part of a new range uh, of five scents, obviously, called the Elements of Man. And each one is named after a particular attribute. So we have got, I need to check because I can't remember, we have Strength, Talent, Wisdom, Passion, and what was this one? integrity. Uh, for the foreseeable future, at least for the next two months, I think, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, they're going to be exclusive to Harrods, and I think actually they're world exclusive to Harrods. Um, and what happened at last night's launch was that I was there long enough to talk to the uh, creative director of this range and some other ranges that come under the Aramis and Designer Fragrances banner, uh, Trudy Lauren, who worked directly with the perfumers to put this range together. So I got some insights from her, but I I didn't smell the perfumes while I was there, which in a way was actually quite convenient because smelling perfumes at those sorts of events isn't always the best thing um, because there's lots of other stuff going on, you know, people chatting, you can't concentrate, etc. So I, I've got them here and I thought I might smell one of them now. But I'm also a bit worried because they were presented so beautifully and, 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 and so convincingly um, that then I always think, OK, is this going to live up to it? Plus, we don't have time to do all of them, so I'm just going to have to choose one on the basis of the name. Or maybe you can choose. Does somebody feel like choosing? Uh, if I read the names out again and then wait a minute for you to choose. So we've got strength, talent, wisdom, passion and integrity first person to leave a comment about which one of those you'd like me to choose, I'll go with that one. And while I'm waiting for somebody to say something, please somebody say something, I'll show you the box because the, the, the box is really quite impressive as well. I'm, I'm not a, a, a packaging person particularly, packaging ends up in the bin, but um, I, I do admire nicely done packaging, well thought out packaging. Um, it, it just feels very, very luxurious I suppose, so you've got a lid, you know, that is, is actually still attached to the box. That opens out like that and you've got something written about the perfume here. Um, it says it's the Life Collection and then within that I suppose this is going to be a sub-range called Elements of Man. I don't know. Um, the bottles themselves are beautiful with a... Can you just see a green accent at the bottom there? Um, so all of that certainly feels very, very, very high quality. They're going to be uh, expensive. I did have somewhere a note about how much they're going to cost. £180 for 50 mils. And this is 50 mils. This is one thing that I did pick up from the presentation yesterday. It's 50 mils of a concentration that they're calling Concentré de Parfum. That's it. Maybe that's the kind of, it, it's it's below an extra de parfum, but above an eau de parfum. So maybe it's the kind of concentration that a few years ago Dior might have called Esprit de Parfum, I'm not sure. But, may as well choose one. I like the sound of integrity. You know, how you convey integrity in a perfume is interesting. So let's go with integrity. I hope I like it. But if I don't, it kind of doesn't matter because I'm sure I'll like one of the other four. Well, I'm not sure, but I'm... Yeah. Okay, that was... Is it magnetised or is it just very tight? No, it's just very tight. Okay. So this is Integrity, the new scent in the Elements of Man range from Xenia. Here we go. Where are you? Oh, okay. Certainly very interesting, not because um, at first I thought it was immediately going going to go in the direction of 
generic man fougere woody citrus stuff but that is fascinating what's it doing now because it, it, it's bitter it's bitter but it's powdery at the same time so there's a kind of herbal almost astringent aspect I love how perfume names put ideas in your head because now I don't know whether what I was about to say was prompted by the fact that it's called integrity, but what I was going to say was it feels like the kind of composition that kind of doesn't care what other people are going to think about it because it's not trying overly hard to be liked. So maybe it has integrity. Look, I'm falling for the marketing speak already, but... It's making me think this one. This is really fascinating. Okay, there are bitter herbs. Maybe something like sage could be wrong. Maybe coriander. But there's also a, a floral aspect as though this is a, you know, if, if we want to like play the stereotypical cliche game, this is like a guy who's got a kind of gritty exterior but maybe on the inside he's actually quite tender and gentle and there's almost a, a medicinal facet to it which again in my book is, al is always an interesting thing in perfumery all of those sorts of off notes and weird smells are fascinating because they tend to be unusual so I have to say what I was really afraid of from this collection was that they would all be variations on a kind of generic man theme. Um, maybe the other four are, but, but this one isn't. Integrity certainly isn't so far. I mean, I wonder what the dry down's going. Or maybe, maybe it's actually like a fuzzy lavender. This is interesting. This one is making me think. And uh, if you're aware with the Xenia Essenze collection, in those ones, the idea is for each perfume to showcase a particular ingredient. So there's an oud, as far as I can remember. I'm pretty sure there's a patchouli. Uh, I think there's a neroli. I, I can't remember exactly. These ones are supposed to be more abstract, if you like, relatively speaking. They're not supposed to necessarily just be based on a single ingredient. And this one's certainly doing that. I am. Thoroughly, thoroughly intrigued. Okay, let us have a look at what the official thing... Now, which one was I doing? Integrity. So, integrity, an evocative fragrance. Yeah, I'll go with that for the moment, actually. That romances the balance of mind and matter. Romances the balance of mind and matter. Discuss. To reveal the contrasting aroma of herbal clary sage. Okay. Blended with the candor of fine pink pepper spices. So, maybe that's what I was reading as woods. Not overly pink peppery. You don't get that immediate burst of powdered pepper. Summer ripe pimento berries are cooled by the shade of lasting green notes as the constancy of amber is made potent by pure African geranium. So that, that'll be the floral aspect. But nothing shouts out. It, it's, 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 a, it's a more abstract blend. And I'm impressed with that so far. I will, I will want to... Um, wear that for sure and now I'm very very curious as to what the the others are going to be like hmm fascinating right I'm always aware of how much I go on in these videos plus we had our technical hitch so I, I, I shouldn't keep you any longer we'll try and do one more I think before I go quick sniff of uh, the ones that we had at the beginning of the first video before we had our Wi-Fi outage this is the Louis from Galin it's gone quieter still, but David, yes, I'm afraid you did miss Louis, but you can always go back and rewatch. but just wait until we finished and you'll have to watch the first video, which was broadcast before the Wi-Fi went, and then I started messing with my router at home and doing the second video. Uh. Thank you, Karina. You explained it much more succinctly than I did. Um, you missed the live broadcast of Louis, David, but, um, but you can always go back and watch it. Um, 
it's just it's a very pretty carnation without being silly or stupid I do like it we're doing well today aren't we we normally don't have so many good ones Vero's perfume which hasn't been so long since I um, sprayed that one yeah still still that slightly weird and yet very very introspective but still draw pulling you in tobacco and the Xenia we've just sprayed so I think maybe what we will finish with today decisions 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 is um, shall we have an amouage I don't think I've done an amouage on this or have I not um, this is the new interesting name uh, quite a good name really quite a fun name it's called Beach Hut and this is Beach Hut for men so it's Beach Hut Man this isn't the the, the proper bottle by the way this is the sample bottle um, and it comes not in the main Amouage collection and my life isn't going to be worth living now because I forget I forget what this, this sub range is called I think it's Midnight Flower I'm pretty sure it's not Midnight Garden I think it's Midnight Flower and it's basically an opportunity for the creative director Christopher Chong to um, oh hang on Joe's just written please give Garden Roses by Burberry a sniff if you have time okay well I'll tell you what since you've since you've jumped in uh, we'll do Garden Roses very quickly because I can talk a little bit about Beach Hut because I have already smelt it and this is just to prove that this really is live and unscripted and how could I possibly refuse a request from somebody who has actually bothered to tune in after a Wi-Fi outage? Thank you very much, Joe. Which one was it? Garden Roses. I have got Garden Roses here. Is this going to be good? Now, Joe, when you say, yes, Beach Hut, did you mean, yes, you've smelt it and you liked it, or yes, you'd like me to talk about it for a bit? So this is Garden Roses. Let's see if we can do these very, very quickly. I don't have to spend too much time thinking about Beach Hut because I've already worn it a couple of times. Suffice to say that I like it. Thank you very much for the thumbs up and hearts flying past. They're very, very much appreciated. Oh, how am I meant to do this? This is far too small a opening. For right, this is going to have to be on skin, people. So Garden Roses, part of a new exclusive range from Burberry. Um, I kind of assumed that they were probably all going to have been made by Francis Kirkjian, but I, I don't know that for a fact. I don't have any information to tell me whether that's true. Joe, you say they're by Kirkjian. I, 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 I suspect they probably are because I think he's effectively like a, an in-house in, in perfumer for them, but not an exclusive in-house perfumer because obviously um, he works for himself and for other brands as well. Garden Roses from Burberry. Pardon me smelling my arm without saying anything. Yes, it's rosy. Yes, it kind of smells like the roses that smell in, that grow in my garden, which are scented. Um, although, you know, compared to the real thing, I have to say it's, it's, a, it's a pale imitation of. There's a, a very strong lemony aspect coming through, so so far, it, it is, as its name would suggest, it is outdoorsy, sun-kissed, gentle, you know, there's a, there's a breeze blowing. This, isn't, this is not a nocturnal nighttime rose for, you know, your, your killer outfit for some party at a swanky hotel. There's a kind of lychee fruit feel, the, the similar sort of thing that um, was it Jean Claude Elena did a, a, that kind of effect in Rosie Cabana for Hermes, or maybe it was another rose, but that lychee feel I've smelt before in rose compositions. I have to say, at the moment, it's kind of not exciting me too much. I mean, it, it's a it's a, it's a ticks all the boxes rose. There is maybe some kind of an incense line that's just going through it, which is interesting. So maybe this is the sort of thing that literally would bloom on your skin. 
So it's not love at first scent, but it's certainly mild curiosity. I have very little about these. I certainly don't have uh, fragrance by fragrance descriptions. All I've got is just a general uh, release from Harrods to explain that these are now going to be part of the extended Salon de Parfum. And under the Burberry bit, it says Burberry will showcase the Burberry bespoke collection inspired by the British countryside, a Bloomsbury garden. Is it a granny rose? No, Karina, it's not a granny rose, no. No, it's definitely youthful. Uh, mild pink. Gently smiling away. Maybe with not too many brain cells in its head. You know, you kind of smile and you go, nice. Um, a Bloomsbury garden, coastal settings, and a lush Scottish heath. That, that's all of them in general, not, not, not this one. Uh, they will also do fragrance discovery appointments at their uh, counter or concession, during which bottles can be monogrammed. And then it says, from £225, but I don't know whether that means these are going to be from £225 or the... the um, the monogrammed bottles, a carefree rose, maybe a lazy rose, you know, care, care, carefree's got a sort of romantic connotation to it, hasn't it? You just imagine somebody carefree with their scarf blowing in the wind and, and if they wanted to they could go off and, you know, get a PhD in two minutes, but now this is a bit just kind of, can we have a conversation with somebody a bit more interesting? Uh, Joe says, I think you're quite spot on. A fresh, dewy, fruity, lychee, I agree, daytime rose. Oh, okay, so you have actually smelt it. So let me know what you think of it. Uh, David says, a beautiful rose can be found in Paco Palladiano by uh, Six from Bottega Veneta. David, I completely agree. That was a very, very good one, but very different from this. I would have to check my notes and my samples, but I think that one is a kind of nocturnal rose with stronger woody facets. I mean, there are lots and lots of great roses out there. Uh, I think I recently wrote about the new perfume from Nicolai, uh, and is it called Rose Royale or Royal Rose, something like that? Um, a, a, a more interesting rose than this one so far, but hey, this is love at first scent. I will keep sniffing my arm for the whole of the rest of the day. And if it turns out to be really, really gorgeous, uh, then I will say so in the comments. But shall we do Beach Hut in two minutes? And then I will let you go. So Beach Hut, as I was saying, is the latest from Amouage. It is uh, part of the line in which the creative director, Christopher Chong, explores the sorts of accords and materials that wouldn't be quite at home in the main Amouage range. Um, in other words, in this collection, he doesn't have to go for things which are heavy and opulent and resinous and kind of hitting you over the head with all of this, um, with, with oriental stereotypes, even though I think, you know, obviously Amouage do that kind of thing very well and some of my favorite perfumes from that style are Amouage perfumes. But that's not what you get from this collection, which from what I can, unless I'm mistaken, is, um, let me just quickly check my notes. No, it doesn't say, what that collection is called. I think it's, I think it's Midnight Flower. Somebody, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. And as I say, I have worn this already, so I can kind of talk about it. This was genuinely love at first scent. I got my sample a few days ago, and there's always a bit of trepidation when I get something new from Amouage, because again, like with Gavelin, actually like with most brands, I want to like the stuff. I want to be able to be positive about it. Um, if any of you smelt uh, Sunshine Man, which came out two years ago? Can't remember now certainly over a year ago. That was just such a perfect name for that scent, Sunshine Man, because it really, really felt like a holiday in a bottle, a summer holiday in a bottle, a beautiful, beautiful lavender, full of the most optimistic, uplifting notes you could imagine. Um, it, it really was a sunny delight. This is called Beach Hut, and again, it's got uh, all of those happy, joyful, constantly smiling summer vibes in there. One of my favorite things to do in the summer, which I didn't get to do this year, not that I'm complaining because we changed our summer routine slightly, but one of my favorite things to do in the summer is to lie on a beach 
and then at some point think it is now time to have a Nutella donut with a cappuccino. So I go and I ask for my, for my beignet Nutella and my cappuccino and then suddenly the world is a perfect place and I consume my disgusting calories. Sometimes I share the donut, usually I don't, and I have my cappuccino. And I'm just smiling for the whole of the rest of the day. And, and Beach Hut completely has that kind of feel. In terms of specific smell notes, this was tricky because I'd, I'd want to say lemon and then I'd think, no, it's a kind of more herbal than that. Is it verbena? But then I would say verbena and I'd go, no, it's kind of more fruity than that. But you, you get the idea. It, it's got that citrus. Um, thank you very much, Joe. Beach Hut is part of the Midnight Flower Collection. Thank you. I was pretty sure it wasn't Midnight Garden. It's, it's, it's fruity herbal, maybe lavendery. There are definitely woods in the base there supporting things, but the emphasis is on zing and zest at the top, and it lasts. It lasts at the expense of a dry down, which maybe starts becoming a little bit too soapious and, and synthetic as it goes along, but, but not in a way that attracts major criticism from me. You know, I'm just smelling this now, and I can actually see the sunlight reflecting off the surface of the Mediterranean, catching the ripples on the waves with, you know, a, a thousand little pinpoints of light. And it's all of the sort of happy noises that you associate with the summer as well, like children joyfully playing in the background, people chattering away in a very, very sort of leisurely way, elderly couples strolling, people going past on bicycles. It, it just kind of makes you slow down and makes you wish that the whole world could be the south of France and that you could get Nutella donuts wherever and whenever you want, although our waistline probably wouldn't, wouldn't be so grateful. Um, very little press material I've got on this. Uh, it says it's a woody aromatic fragrance for men. Yeah, yes, okay, except the aromatic stuff is really quite citrusy too. Uh, notes we've got are mint, which is maybe why I keep thinking, is it verbena, is it lemon? I mean, it, it, there isn't anything overly obvious here. It's not, it is not toothpaste mint by any means. Uh, orange blossom, yeah, but if it is, it's not indolic orange blossom. Galbanum, see, because I was hovering on the verge of saying, is there something green in there and there could be, but, but it, is, it is a seamless blend. Vetiver, moss and ivy, myrrh, patchouli, woody notes. It's, it's just fun. And I think if at any point Christopher Chong is going to watch this, his heart must be sinking now because the pattern seems to be that if I like a perfume, then it does really, really badly for the brand. And if I go heavily criticizing a perfume, then it turns out to be a hit. So Mr. Chong, if you are watching this, I'm really sorry, but I think this one is going to be a massive failure for Amouage because I really like it. So I really should let you go. If you have managed to stay through to the end of the hour, thank you very much. For the first time in Love at First Scent, we had a technological issue and the Wi-Fi conked out, I think at about the half hour mark, and I had to restart. So uh, just to sum up then, I don't think there is going to be a way for me to combine this video with the first one on Facebook. I think they will have to remain as two separate videos, but I will leave comments at the, at the end of each one to explain what happened. However, for the YouTube upload, I will be able to put the two together. So those of you lucky people watching on YouTube, you shouldn't have any interruption to the service. Leave questions on whichever video you like, the first one, the second one, I don't mind. Please give me as many likes and hearts and things like that as possible. I will, on one of the videos, give the sort of uh, the update at some point to say, to let you know how the um, blotters are doing. But I also hope to be able to come back and do another Love at First Scent soon because there is so much to tell you about. This is the time of year when all of the Christmas releases start coming out. There was lots more here. We've, we've got a new cologne from Aqua di Palma. We've got a new release from Coudray a whole brand new brand which is only at the Salon de, de Parfum. That's the only place in the world where you can find it. It's called Floraiku. It's got a kind of Japanese vibe going on. Um, 
and a new one, another one which I really, really wanted to get to today. Perhaps I'll write about it or save it for another episode. There's a new one from Naomi Gutze. Again, a brand which has been very, very careful with rele its releases in terms of not doing too many. And they are also a brand that have yet to release a single dud. I haven't smelt this one. It's called Nuit de Bakelite. I don't know how you say Bakelite in French. Is it Nuit de Bakelite or something? But anyway, it's Bakelite Nights, which is an intriguing proposition. And also new perfumes from the candle makers, uh, Sia Trudon. Uh, they, they've gone into the perfume game too. So lots of other things to bring to your attention. If there are any of those in particular, the, the, in particular that you'd like me to focus on for future episodes, please let me know. Joe's asking me to do Naomi Gutzer in the next video. Yeah, I'll have to. I wanted to do it today, but we didn't get time. So thank you very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.